Hello, everyone, and welcome to Three Words, a bite-sized podcast about the small, significant, and strategic choices that you can make, that we can make in becoming the very best version of ourselves. My name is Dr. Michael Brown. I am the host of this three-word episode of the entire podcast in general, and I am so glad that you're joining us today, either on our YouTube channel or on your favorite podcast platform. Let's be honest. This has been a challenging time in the history of our world. And so we want to engage in some conversations right now, our team, in helping ourselves become the best version of ourselves in the midst of a global COVID-19 pandemic. So I've invited my dear friend, Russell Catania, who is a first-year medical student here in Toledo, Ohio, to engage with me about a very important conversation that is not only relevant now during this pandemic, but across time. In the three words, if you would, Russell, are... Absolutely, DMB, thanks for having me. And thank you for wiping down my table here with a Clorox wipe We are fully before social distance. I really yes. appreciate that. Our three words today are don't be surprised, and I would really appreciate if you finish that sentence for me. Don't be surprised. And maybe even as you heard those three words, you're like, don't be surprised about what? This is the conversation for today. Don't be surprised that life is difficult. And don't be surprised that life is painful. Yeah, it's a really challenging thing to think about at surface level. I mean, do, am I a pessimist for that viewpoint, DMB? And, and I think uh, one thing that I was just mulling over in my mind as I was preparing to have this conversation with you, something that a pastor told me uh, several years ago, he, he asked me one day, uh, is it okay to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst? Mm. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst kind of reminds me of this conversation. I mean, is it okay to not be surprised if things get painful, if things get sour, leave a bad taste in our mouth? And I can remember a time where I was preparing to go to undergrad and uh, after studying four years at the University of Akron, I I feel comfortable sharing that uh, it was my sixth choice of six. I I had a 10-year plan to get to medical school that took me far away from Akron, Ohio. And uh, I can remember you know, realizing shortly but surely that, you know, that plan was not going to happen. And I remember just wallowing for weeks, Mm. even months, just with the decisions that I was going to have to make to to follow a different path. And I was surprised. I I was surprised that what I had laid out for myself wasn't what happened. And okay, granted, I was 18 years old. I think a lot of 18 year olds would say at one point in their life, they had done that, but painful, painful. Well, and quite honestly, um, even if you're 18 and or 80, the reality is we kind of expect that life should feel right and that pain should not come into our lives. And we know that it does, and but yet we're surprised whenever it happens. Is if we're in a difficult relationship or a challenging career situation, or even this pandemic, we were surprised, were we not? Absolutely. As an entire nation, when this came, no one was expecting it to come, and I don't think we could have been uh, necessarily uh, prepared fully for a pandemic. Right. And yet, I think the deeper root issue is we're surprised that something terrible happened. My mentor once said it this way, that life becomes less difficult when you just acknowledge that life is difficult. And I think that we are feeling that even in the midst of this pandemic, Russell, this notion that life is hard, that this time is hard, that this is one of the most challenging realities that our nation and our community has ever faced. And while the pandemic is a surprise, I don't want us to be surprised that life is hard and life is difficult. And, and and I just want to talk a little bit, if I can, about this idea of pain. Typically what happens when we face pain is we have one of three approaches. We try to explain our pain. We try to escape our pain or we try to eradicate pain altogether. Now, I don't think that it's even possible to eradicate pain. Uh, life is painful. It's hard. It's beautiful, of course. It's wonderful. There's so many amazing things about being a human being on this planet Earth. And yet, as we look around, it's obvious. There's hard things happening. It's, it's troublesome at times. It's turbulent. It's, it's challenging. We're not going to be able to eradicate, eradicate pain. So let's just give that up. This, the, the, the second idea is escaping pain. I'm not sure we can do that either. There's things, obviously, that we can do to make our lives less pain-free. But the challenging, most difficult one is, and again, I think these are three ineffective approaches to pain is to explain it. I mean, I don't have an explanation for what's happening around us. I mean, 
we could try to explain it. We could try to get to the root of it and say, why is this happening? And I think that's a hard question to answer. I mean, obviously, we need to talk about how do we deal with it and what is happening and what does this mean? But why? Wow, that's hard. Absolutely. And and I think those three kind of ways that we try to get through pain, I, I think these are kind of ends up why being those don't really work that well. I mean, pain is... Mm. It's, it's common, like we've just talked about, but it is super complex, right? And I, I think the complexity of it makes all three of those insufficient in dealing with our pain, right? We can't yeah. just explain it away. We can't just escape it. It's too complex and it's very complicated. There is not going to be one solution. We're, we're going to have to search different avenues for the same problem. And I think by developing a, a kind of a multi-system approach to dealing with those painful moments in our life, it's going to help us in the future and in the present to not be so bereaved and, yeah. and so grief stricken for long periods of time. We can, we can be emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, and relationally prepared for, for those moments in life where we, we, we really ought not to be surprised. For sure. And, and so if I may, cause obviously not only now, but even post pandemic, I think we're going to all be experiencing on some level of different ways, some post traumatic stress. And we're talking sure. about that. And as we work with clients and as we're helping people continue to be positive during this time, I wanted to have a conversation, not only about not being surprised about the fact that life is difficult and life is painful, but also coping mechanisms. What does it look like? Cause obviously we can't escape it. We can't eradicate it. We can't necessarily explain it. But I think there are some positive approaches, uh, the first of which is to express our pain. Mm -hmm. I think during this time, we need to be very careful to not just positively spin everything. Though I do think that this pandemic is not just happening to us, but also happening for us. There is some really positive things that are occurring because of the pandemic in my own personal life and mm -hmm. my own journey. And even in some of the people that I'm connected to, I think it's a moment of awakening and awareness like, wow what's most important, but I also need to be willing and need to give space to express pain. Absolutely. I mean, and the, and the fact that expressing is so helpful is just because a lot of our pain is, is caused at the root. It's, it's a human condition problem. And yeah. so what better way to express with human beings to solve a problem with the human condition in many cases? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the coronavirus itself has not directly affected our circumstances, but I can say that these situations we find ourselves in being home a lot more with, mm -hmm. with loved ones who, uh, loved ones again, but yeah. sometimes that, that human <laughs> condition in us right. can just cause moments where we ought not be surprised because we're locked in with some people that yeah. we really, really care about otherwise, right? But it, it, to express with humans is, mm -hmm. is a way to solve those issues with the human condition. And in many ways, not only expressing the pain then, there's also, as you, you alluded to, we're educated by that pain. Absolutely. There's things that we're learning about ourselves, about our relationships, about who we are and what we value and what matters most, that this pain of the pandemic, as challenging as it is, it's teaching us a lot. Right. It's teaching us a lot about ourselves, about our community, about our preparedness, about our country, about what matters, about the human spirit, the courage and the tenacity that our frontline workers. And obviously, as a first year med student, you're very connected to that community. We've learned a lot during this mm -hmm. time. But let's not let those lessons um, slip away without actually making a firm impression on our spirits and locking in uh, what it means to really uh Right. Look deeply and, and lean into the lessons that we're learning. Yeah. So obviously expressing that pain. Right. Absolutely. And, and educated. And, by and the pain. I'm just going to, I mean, please, especially if I'm making harmful choices that I'm not aware of. Right. Cause sometimes that, that can be one way that those human condition features really, really make those moments of pain in others. Or right? I can, I can do something and I can be doing it over and over again. And I'm just not, I'm not educating myself through the conversations with those loved ones that I'm hurting. I'm not educating myself on how I could be coping better with my personal stress, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm displacing it on others or I'm projecting it on others. So if I am not educating myself on those harmful choices that I could be making personally either, yeah, I agree with you. You're going to hit a roadblock and you're, you're going to default to those not helpful, yeah. you know, coping mechanisms almost to, to get rid of those painful feelings. And Russell, if I can, I'd love to share one more, I think, a great coping strategy um, that's positive, that isn't eradicating or escaping or trying to explain it all. And it may sound a little provocative, but I want to encourage, and I want to say this to myself looking in the mirror, I want to actually embrace pain. Um, 
And that may sound strange. Even as it comes out of my mouth, it feels a little strange to say it. But uh, again, I can try to avoid pain. I can try to escape pain. But there's, there's pain that's happening right now. And to actually to, to carry it and to say, this is painful. I've expressed it. I'm learning from it. But I'm going to embrace this moment. I'm going to take this opportunity. I'm going to invest this time as I'm sheltered at home and I'm socially distancing and I'm going to let um, pain dwell with me and actually learn from it, of course, being educated, but also I'm not going to try to run away. I'm going to actually lean into it and and learn more about myself, but also um, it's okay if it's there. Because pain can be my friend. I mean, we talk about even in the fitness world, you know, no pain, no gain. And sure. the difficulty <laughs> that we tend to be simply mediocre at our best mm-hmm. when there's not painful and challenging situations going on in our life. That knowing that there's so many benefits to this time and so many benefits of the pain that we're going through to actually embrace it, as provocative as it may sound, I think it's really, really, really important. Right. Your best friend has told me multiple times that we should just plant our tree, right? Dig those roots real deep. And and even in those hurtful circumstances that can cause us pain, if we just embrace, imagine what we would feel like if no matter the connotation of the circumstance, we just embraced it. And Mm -hmm. we took that circumstance and reflected on what choices brought us there. Yeah. And and embraced it, just like you said. I, I find that we could be more reflective and more problem solving in those areas where we can learn to not be surprised. We can learn to mitigate that pain, em- embrace that moment, that circumstance, because honestly, it'll probably happen again in one form or another. Maybe not a, gl- a global yes. pandemic in our lifetime, but- It's coming again. Uh, right. Is there going to be a time where we're going to be really close to loved ones again? And, and this- this issue of not being able to communicate for a long period of time with family member X, right? Yeah. Yeah. We might be a family vacation where you're just in the same house for a while and there's not really an escape, right? Mm -hmm. Embrace that circumstance and really reflect. And I think what you mean by embrace is give yourself an opportunity to not escape it, right? By by embracing it, you're doing the exact opposite. Even though we can't embrace each other as friends right now. Right, right. I think we can really look at those moments and say, I'm not running from this. I'm going to be at home with this. Right. I'm going to let this be here and I'm not going to try to push it out. Let's figure it out. Let's let's figure it out. And I guess that's where I would like to end even our conversation with this really important idea. And that is that pain is not the threat to your joy and contentment and Mm -hmm. happiness. Um, it is, it is a poor perspective. It is an improper perspective on life, which is the perspective that pain should, we should have a pain free life and that life should be easy. I think that is the threat, not pain itself, but a perspective that does not give real, um, weight and the ability to have presence, pain in our lives. That is actually the threat. So th- that's really the, the purpose of this conversation. And I just would love to end even now saying it out loud that Russell, for you, for me, for those who are listening and watching, don't be surprised. For life coaching, consulting services, or to hire a keynote speaker, please visit dmbcoaching.com.